Hey guys, I'm Andrew Henderson from Nomad Capitalist, nomadcapitalist.com, and the author of this book, available on Amazon and on Kindle, which will show anyone how to become a global citizen. In today's video, I wanted to discuss yet another myth, yet another black and white approach that people take to a shades of gray issue when it comes to getting second passports. And specifically, I want to talk about visa-free travel, because I think if you're looking to get a second passport, even more so if you're looking to get a second passport portfolio of multiple passports, uh, this is an issue that you should pay attention to. Now, I was having a conversation with uh, an old colleague, someone who works in the industry. Um, we don't really intersect very much, but we've known each other for years. He's pretty much working with the ultra high net worth individuals, guys with 25, 50, 100 million dollars, generational wealth, uh, whereas uh, my focus is really on people who have lived as I had for the last 13 or 14 years, people from 250 grand a year in earnings uh, up to several million dollars who are running active businesses, who are entrepreneurs, who are investors. Uh, and so we don't really cross paths, but we were talking and he made an interesting point about visa-free travel. Uh, and he said, you know, if one of my clients, speaking as him, one of my clients who has $50 million has a passport that doesn't give him visa free to a certain country, uh, and he wants to get that visa, do you really think he's going to have much of an issue with his $50 million getting a visa to that country? Now, obviously, there is some nuance to this. If the guy uh, is connected with some mobsters somewhere, if the guy's on a list um, then that's going to be an issue, and that's going to be an issue whether he has money or not. But for the average ultra high net worth person, and really for the average high net worth person, is getting a visa to most countries going to be an issue? Uh, and the answer is no. And so this really dovetails into a conversation that I've had numerous times with numerous people in this business about how visa free travel is exaggerated. When you go online to do the internet research that so many folks do when they first start looking into this stuff, everyone wants to brag, get the Grenada passport, you get 137 visa-free countries. That's three more than Antigua's visa-free. And, and it becomes a little bit ridiculous. Now, you know, th this other lawyer's position is that visa-free travel doesn't really matter that much. Other people in the business who, uh, do advisory work would say, you know, it, it matters somewhat, but it matters on where you want to go. Uh, and I would tend to agree with that latter position a bit more, but I think it really depends on what you're trying to accomplish. And so I think what people want to do, especially people that I'm talking to who maybe are U.S. citizens now but don't want to be, or are some kind of other Western citizenship but want a backup plan in case they can't be that in the future. Their number one thing is, I have 165 countries now, I can go pretty much anywhere I want, and I don't want to give that up. And it becomes kind of an ego thing. Now, I understand that if you can't go back to the country that you were born in, that may be a negative. For example, people who are giving up U.S. citizenship, they have a passport that's not on the visa waiver program list, and they say, hey, you know, getting a U.S. visa scares me. Now, we've talked about that in other videos, but I understand that. But for me, as someone who was born with the ability to travel to New Zealand and now does not have the ability to travel to New Zealand without a visa, I can't really say that my life is greatly changed because of that. For me, I, I, I have friends from New Zealand, I'll occasionally work with someone from New Zealand, um, and I'd like to go to New Zealand someday, I suppose, just because I want to go most places. But I've never really seen the need in terms of what I do as the nomad capitalist. And when eventually I want to get around to going to New Zealand, I'll go online, I'll fill out their visa application, and I imagine um, I shouldn't have any problems going to New Zealand. Uh, it's not like I want to be coming and going all the time to where I need that ability to just show up with my passport. And I think that that probably applies to most people in most situations. Um, keep in mind that obviously here at Nomad Capitalist, we, we talk about a more travel oriented lifestyle than most people want to live, including most ultra high net worth people. So the idea is that, hey, I just want to pop into Thailand for the weekend. Um, but as someone who has sacrificed a bit of visa free travel for freedom and for feeling good and feeling in sync, uh, I can tell you that I haven't really noticed a difference. I did a video on getting a visa for Thailand. Not difficult. 
Got a visa for Japan. Not difficult. Um, there have been times when I don't need visas for countries, but I'll actually go in with a different passport and, and get a visa just to see what it's like. And outside of a, a small handful of countries, it's not that difficult. Now, people think, hey, if I give up my U.S. citizenship, maybe I won't get a U.S. visa. Um, certainly, there's always a risk that some country can deny you a visa for any reason. And yes, I mean, the, the TRA, English-speaking countries, tend to be the hardest for visa issuance. Um, they will put you through the most steps. And so, to a certain extent, I, I would say that if you can get as much visa-free travel just to avoid wasting time, that might be valuable. You know, having a passport that gets you into at least the U.K. and Ireland may be valuable um, to not have to go through those rather difficult visa processes. But just to sit around and collect visa-free countries, to sit and look at a number and say that one is better than the other because you get six extra visa-free countries, really ignores the fact of where do you want to go? Where are you going to be traveling? When I'm helping someone, I'll sit there and say, where do you plan to be going? You know, I'll run into someone who uh, just recently said, hey, Asia is where I want to be. I need all the Asian countries. And so that's pretty straightforward. Um, and so that guy can get a passport or two that gets him into pretty much everywhere in Asia. I think in his case, he needed a visa for Thailand, and we figured out a way to handle that. Um, another person said, I want to be in Eastern Europe. That's my, my playground. That's where I'm doing work. And so other parts of the world weren't that important to him. And so building your passport strategy, whether you need one, two, or whatever, around where you want to be traveling is important. If you want to be traveling everywhere, then you can build a portfolio that gets you as much of that as possible, but also sets you up to where you can go and get visas to countries as needed. And generally, again, they won't be very difficult. There may be other strategies to reduce uh, the time spent, such as residence permits, such as business visas, such as other strategies. Um, but the idea that uh, you want to geek out on, hey, if only I get this passport, I can add South Africa visa-free, uh, is a little silly. In fact, I recently had someone who I said, hey, you know, you want to add this one passport, you're literally going to get one extra visa-free country. It was Malawi. You know, they were so excited about, you know, what can I do with this extra passport? I'm looking at this one and I'm going to go through the work to get one extra visa-free country. And so, uh, you know, where do you want to go? You know, what do you need? What other uh, problems does a second passport help you solve? Is it insurance policy? Is it, is it a plan B? Is it an active strategy to get out of a current citizenship? Um, what are you trying to accomplish is the question I'm always asking. And I think that so many people get caught up in the visa-free access and they don't realize, particularly if they are Westerners, that even if you just can't show up with your passport in a country, you can get a visa and in almost all cases, it's not as difficult as you think. Needing a visa does not mean you can't go. Um, and I think that if you have means, if you have connections, if you have a clean criminal record, uh, then getting a visa isn't really that difficult. And, and the people who come to Nomad Capitalist often don't really understand that. They think visa as like forbidden, as prohibited, and that's not the case. So definitely don't make your second passport search just about a number of visa-free travel countries where I think you're going to uh, lose some things in other ways. Now, if you want to find out more about second passports, how to get them, how they can help you, and how to put together your strategy. We've got a lot of videos here on YouTube uh, over the years that have talked about that. Definitely click subscribe and check out our other videos while you're here. But also head on over to nomadcapitalist.com. We've got some links in the description here that can help you. And you'll definitely want to check out our treasure trove of info uh, on nomadcapitalist.com.